modeling the equinox sun in Sydney, flat earth and globe earth. So I'm really fond of the equinox in terms of the flat earth debate. And so here's a playlist, uh, 11 videos long. I will make this video number 12. So here's a disclaimer. Um, my model making skills are not that great. So there's no machined parts, no Arduino uh, controlled stepper motors. Uh, it's just foam core, hot glue, blue tape, and, and everything is handheld. So there's some shaky cam action. The challenge is from Wolfie 6020 um, to build a model that demonstrates the equinox sun angles and how it, it really doesn't work on a flat earth and how why an equatorial mount um, cannot track the, the sun uh, on the equinox. So welcome to Australia. Um, we're going to go down to Sydney, New South Wales. And it's got a 34 degree south latitude. So there's an east-west line. And so here's a line facing the North Pole and a line facing the south. But then we're going to raise up 34 degrees elevation to have our, the south celestial pole in the southern sky of Sydney. All right, so that's important. So as far as the scale of, of the model, when I'm building this uh, flat earth model, uh, I've got a couple starting points. Um, one of them is, is how far is it from the equator to the North Pole? And uh, people can argue over the, the uh, elevation of the flat Earth sun. So I'm using 3,000 miles, but you know, you're know you welcome to change the numbers. You know, change, change the numbers to numbers that, that you like, and then you can actually duplicate, uh, duplicate the calculations, duplicate the, um, you know, my efforts and see, see how you do. So I put a bunch of numbers into a spreadsheet and, and the numbers are sort of, you know, you, using each number to calculate other numbers, like for example, the miles per degree latitude, that's actually a calculated value. Um, but ultimately, how big is the scale going to be of my model? Well, that's a personal choice. And I just figured, oh, let's have an arm span. Um, like I wanted to be able to reach both the sun and the telescope in Sydney. So I figured, all right, 48 inches. I just arbitrarily picked 48 inches because I thought I could reach them both. Uh, so I picked that. Um, you could pick any other number uh, for your model. Um, and once I picked 48 inches, that gave me the model scale. So that's 178 uh, miles per inch, which then tells me the radius of the sun on the equinox, the sun's orbit, will be about 35 inches. And it also tells me the elevation of the flat Earth sun will be 17 inches. So this is a, a photo of, of my setup uh, again, 17-inch uh, elevation, 35-inch radius of rotation, and 180 degrees of freedom uh, will represent 12 hours of sun on the equinox. All right, and then lastly, the Sydney uh, was 48 inches. That was that was my starting point, 48 inches Sydney to the North Pole. And so here's uh, my little tape measure. So I'm accurately placing Sydney um, from the North Pole. All right, so. This is sort of a, a test, a test run of, of my uh, my sun. Um, can I control the sun uh, using by pulling that string? All right. So now we're going to work on the telescope and the equatorial mount. So here is my uh, my my telescope. It's uh, it's really expensive, um, and a normal equatorial mount. You're, you're first going to polar align it, so you have to use your latitude. And then if you rotate around that, um, that axis, that's your right ascension axis. And they usually draw these telescopes like pointed, you know, like the telescope itself is pointed to your celestial pole. Um, but in our case, we're going to be tracking the sun. So our telescope is going to be facing at 90 degrees to this axis. All right. So this is what I came up with. Um, I've got... Uh, a scale so I can change my latitude. All right, so I can get up to a to a higher latitude, which is you know towards the polar regions, uh, and then I can also rotate. Um, you know, once I fix my latitude, I can then rotate uh, right ascension or the uh, the axis of, of rotation. All right, so here I've um, fixed the telescope to be at 34 degrees. And so this is showing um, how the telescope is going to move um, from Sydney. So this shows the telescope um, on Sydney. And I'm indicating east, west, and north. 
And I've, I'm raising up, uh, I'm giving myself a little bit of an artificial horizon because the telescope lens is not exactly right on level with the, the ground. Um, it's a couple inches up, so the artificial horizon will allow me to have uh, sunset or sunrise at uh, approximately eye level. All right, so again, we've got east and west for sunrise and sunset. We've got our, our north-south line, and then our polar axis is at 34 degrees elevation, pointing towards the south celestial pole. All right, now an interesting thing is at solar noon, the expected angle of elevation would be 56 degrees, uh, but you'll find uh, in, in a few moments that um, I wasn't really accurate with, with, my, uh, with my model building. All right, so this is a, sort of a looking over the shoulder of the telescope. So there's the sun moving, and then there's the, the telescope tracking the sun um, for, for 12 hours. All right. And then finally pointing due west for sunset. Now what does the telescope see? All right, so again, we're starting off due east. Um, and then we're, you know, we're trying to track the, uh, the sun. And my, my, um, my synchronization wasn't, wasn't perfect. But uh, you can see that the, it's, uh, it's kind of tracking, tracking the sun a little bit. Um, but then uh, I'm on one axis of rotation. And then finally, I am setting um, due west. Again, that represents 12 hours of sunshine. All right, so here are two photos. Uh, one was taken at the moment of sunrise. The other one was taken at the moment of sunset um, for uh, Sydney, Australia on the equinox for the Flat Earth model. Now, the part of the challenge was talking about solar noon. And, and here's where I my model really was not successful. Uh, at solar noon, you know, the sun was pretty close to center frame. Um, but, you know, the argument is, well, you could just play with the sun's elevation. So I picked 3,000 miles, but, you know, what if you picked 3,200 or what if you, if you picked 2,800? Um, you know, you could, you could get it to line up, right? You could get it to line up if you just fudge the numbers, but that would only work for your latitude. Uh, whatever elevation you pick will not work for other latitudes. So if you fix, you know, if you fix it, <laughs> as in like it's broken, you fix it, uh, it's going to break it for other latitudes, all right. So, but, but my model, you know, you, you could, you could say, well, my model is just inaccurate. And so, you know, you, you would definitely have an argument there. Now, one of the things that I really like um, is measuring shadows and using a simple shadow stick sundial and measuring the, the uh, or, or recording the sun's path in the sky. So if the sun is traveling in a plane parallel to the plane of the earth, then the shadow stick sundial will faithfully record that pattern. Um, so in this case, um, if we're in the southern hemisphere, sort of looking northward, um, we're going to get sort of a, a semicircular frowny face as we face north. Uh, that should be the pattern. And so what I did is I, I, I marked the shadows. Uh, I, I moved the sun. You know, I turned off all the lights so I can see the shadow clearly. And I, I marked this pattern. And it is semicircular. Um, and it's a frowny face as we face north. All right, but um, how does all this equatorial mount stuff? How does this translate to a to a globe? So let's take a look at at the um, this little same little model mount that I was using. So here we have a polar aligned axis of rotation. So the yellow arrow points to the south celestial pole, um, and the the globe is rotating eastward. But then the telescope is rotating westward. So the ultimate, you know, they're supposed to cancel each other out. So that you end up with the, the telescope pointing in the same direction in space. All right. Now, that was for just one latitude. What about other latitudes? So as we shift other latitudes, we will change the telescope mount so that the axis of rotation of the telescope is parallel to the axis of the globe. All right. Now, this is kind of an interesting demonstration. This, th th it kind of looks like a time lapse, but it's not. It just represents one point in time. Uh, let's say, you know, late morning, you know, uh, 9, 30, 10, 10, 30 in the morning. And what we're going to do is we're going to zoom through a bunch of latitudes. So what we're going to see is we're going to see the, the camera move. And we're gonna also going to see the shadows uh, lengthen. So we start off at the tropics with a short shadows. And now we're, we're going to end up in the Antarctic region with very, very long shadows. Um, 
And that kind of represents, you know, how the axis of rotation is going to change depending on our latitude. All right. So now we're going to go back to uh, Sydney and let's uh, let's demonstrate this with it fixed. We're going to fix the axis um, at a 34 degrees and we're going to rotate the globe to the right. And as we rotate the globe to the right, the telescope will rotate to the left in its mount. OK, so ultimately the telescope uh, ends up pointing in the same in the same direction. So, so the net the net rotation is zero with respect to outer space. So ultimately it should track the sun or you know track the stars or whatever, whatever it is you're pointing to. All right, so here's the question. Could I build a globe Earth model and have an equatorial mounted telescope track the sun on the equinox? So that was my challenge. Uh, it was a personal challenge because that was actually not part of the, uh, the video challenge, but I'm trying to go uh, over the top a little bit. So the, one of the keys is to uh, fix, the, fix the angle at 34 degrees. So I'm cutting some foam core uh, triangles, and there you see on the underside the model. The triangles are put in place. So now my, my axis um, is now fixed at 34 degrees. And again, that's pointing towards the south celestial pole because we're sort of facing in a northerly direction. We're actually facing northeast in this, in this photo. Um, again, the, the telescope. The telescope is going to move um, from east to west. So now we, we've turned the model around. We're now facing sort of in a southwesterly direction. It's sort of a reverse angle, but we can now look underneath. And again, there's that angle at 34 degrees. That's where those triangles were put in under, underneath the model. Um, and so that's the rotational axis. And the, the Earth is going to rotate to the east, but then the telescope mount will rotate to the west. All right, so that's the plan. So let's take a look to see, um, to see a bird's eye view to see how, how our, uh, our telescope did. And it does appear, though, it, as though it is tracking the sun. So you can kind of see by the shadows where the sun is, and it does kind of look like the, uh, the telescope is tracking the sun on the equinox. So what does the telescope actually see? So this is uh, footage from the actual um, uh, telescope. It was a different take, um, but it does look like it is uh, tracking the sun uh, very, very nicely. And then we do have sunset um, due, uh, due west. All right, so again, these were two photos taken um, at the moment of sunrise and the moment of sunset. And, uh, and I, think, I think it did a pretty decent job of tracking, tracking the sun uh, on the equinox for the globe model. All right, and again, one of my favorite things is to talk about the path of the sun in the sky. I don't think enough people use uh, sundials, and I, I'm just a big fan of simple shadow stick sundials. So on the equinox in the globe model, uh, the path of or the pattern of the shadows on the equinox should be a straight line. All right, so let's go back to my model, and uh, and again, it's kind of shaky cam, and you know, it is handheld. But let's take a look at this one toothpick and take a look at the, um, the, the path of the shadow. Let's follow that pink line with the little red X's on it. Um, again, it's, it's a little shaky, but you should see the pattern. The pattern should be clear that it is traveling pretty close to a straight line. All right, final disclaimer, please don't believe a word I say. All right, I'm a nice guy. You know, I believe that I'm trustworthy, but you know, please don't believe me. Um, do your own, you know, do your own work and uh, collect your own, um, collect your own measurements. You know, get yourself outside and make your own careful observations. That's that's what, what I recommend. So don't forget, in a world where you can be anything, be kind. Thank you.